What's up, Vivo Pay and Wins? Today we do 2014 number one type selection and SEM bars. Adult male guppies exhibit genetically determined spots, while juvenile adult female guppies lack spots. In a study of selection, male and female guppies were genetically diverse populations, were collected from different mountain streams and placed together in an isolated environment containing no predators. The study population was maintained for several generations in an isolated area before being separated into two groups. One group was moved to an artificial pond containing fish predator, while a second group was moved to an artificial pond containing no predators. The two groups went through several generations in their new environments. At different times during the experiment, the mean number of spots per adult male guppy was determined, as shown in the figure below. Vertical bars in the figure represent two standard errors of the mean, or SEM. So here we can kind of see a little bit bigger of that diagram. Just make sure we're following. So this point is where they were pulled from these different streams and put together. Um, and then six months later is where they were before they were separated. And then we separated them. These ones went to where there was no predator. And these ones went to where there was a predator. Okay. So first question asks us, describe the change in egg variation in a population between zero and six months. And provide reasoning for your description based on the means in SEM. So if we look here at them, right, we've got our error bars. We can see that it goes from 10 mean spots to 12 mean spots. So we have an increase in our number of spots. But that's not what the question is asking us. The question is asking us about the change in genetic variation. And so these error bars are showing the, the range of the genetic variation. They're showing the range of the spots that we were seeing. Okay? And so we went from having a large range of spots to having a small range of spots. And the spots are genetically determined. And so since I go from a large range to a small range, that tells me that my genetic variation is decreasing because my SEM bars are getting smaller. So making sure that you understand what SEM bars mean. They're just showing the, the spread of the data. Um, because I know that most students kind of their brain immediately goes to, oh, error bars, they're overlapping. Data is not significant. So making sure that you do actually understand your SEM bars is important. So the student says in the period lasting from zero to six months, the amount of genetic variation in the population decreased. The mean number of spots increased from 10 to 12 and the SEM decreased, which indicates that there was variation in the number of spots and more of the individuals had a number closer to the mean. So part B is to propose one type of main behavior that could have resulted in the observed change in the number of spots per adult male guppy between six and 20 months in the absence of predator. So if we look at our graph and we look at the key, it tells us that the absent predators are solid line. So when there is no predator present, we see an increase in the number of spots, and they ask us to come up with a mating behavior. That just makes me think of sexual selection. Due to the fact that the individuals with more spots were more favorable to mate with, we see an increase in the number of spots. So there was a sexual preference, a sexual selection for individuals with more spots, or you could just say random mating behavior that resulted in an increased number of spots by chance. So a student says one main behavior that could have resulted in the further increase in the average number of spots in the absence of the predator is sexual selection or preference. Perhaps female guppies showed a preference for males with a greater number of spots. This would make uh, having spots a favorable trait in males and their increase, uh, thus increase its frequency. So part C says propose an evolutionary mechanism that explains the change in average number of spots between six and 20 months in the presence of a predator. So again, if we look at our key, it tells us that the dotted line or the dashed line is our predator uh, present. So we can see when the predator is present, our number of spots decreases. This screams directional selection to me. We're seeing you go from high spots to low spots. So it moves in a direction. And so we're going to have a directional selection against individuals with large number of spots or a directional selection for individuals with fewer spots. You can also talk about natural selection. Due to the fact that individuals with more spots were more likely to be captured by their predator because they're more visible, the uh, having less spots was more favorable because they were more likely to survive and more likely to pass on those traits. And then also genetic drifts resulting in several generations of decreased number of spots. So due to the fact that we isolated this individual population, um, we were having a founder effect or um, some type of genetic drift that then decreased that number of spots. So a student says evolutionary mechanism that would explain the decrease in spots, the presence of predators is the potentially decreased fitness of males with spots. This could be a number of reasons, but perhaps the spots made the guppies more visible to predators and then caused them to be eaten more frequently. This would decrease their ability to mate. They would die before sexually mature and thus result in a lower frequency of spots. So I hope this was helpful. Remember, AP Bio Pain was just a success. Bye, y'all.